with all the focus on climate change and environmental destruction lately, I've been thinking about viewing environmentalism through an anti-natalist perspective. A simple dictionary definition for environmentalism is an ideology that aims to protect the environment. A natural, though often overlooked, follow-up question is, why would we want to protect the environment? For the moment, let's focus on humans and their predicament. Let's assume the sole purpose of protecting the environment is to spare humans of the perils of drastic climate-driven disruptions in their lives. If we assume that humans are the single largest source of destruction of natural habitats and contribution to unwanted climate change, and if having more humans means getting more destruction, then every environmentalist's goal should be to help ethically reduce the global population. It's puzzling to me why something so obvious is so taboo. If your house is flooding because you left a faucet running over a faulty sink, the most logical first step to prevent worsening flooding is to shut off the valve. It's quite frustrating that this is so hard for people to hear. If people voluntarily opted to not procreate, we would spare billions of future people the suffering that will come with a harder way of life in a chaotic environment, and we would reduce the consequences existing people would have to deal with. I once voiced a version of this obvious fact in a public forum, and in addition to the idea being rejected, there were proposals suggesting that we can all just use fewer resources, implying that therefore the reproduction rate wouldn't have to be addressed. First, there is obviously a mathematical limit to this. Second, we have to acknowledge that this leads to drastic reductions in quality, or at least style of life, whether we like it or not. It is physically unsustainable for more than 7 billion people to live like the industrialized middle and upper classes live currently. If we are to keep some sense of ethical avoidance of disparity, this leads to the need either to lower everyone's standards or reduce the population size by avoiding further procreation. I'm not against changing our standards. That will unavoidably happen for the vast majority of people regardless. But something has to give. And reducing the population size obviously makes more sense, although population reduction and limiting wastefulness of resources are certainly not mutually exclusive. Having said all this, as an anti-natalist, it is clear to me that even if climate change were not a problem, avoiding procreation is the most ethical choice in order to reduce suffering. In fact, I would like to avoid anti-natalism being limited to an environmental argument. Antinatalism makes sense because of the inherent characteristics of sentient existence and suffering, regardless of how the climate may or may not change. But if one is to claim environmentalist ideals, one should strongly consider leaning toward antinatalism if the goal of environmentalism is to reduce suffering, of humans or of other sentient creatures. And speaking of other sentient creatures, Claiming environmentalism while ignoring the suffering of animals effectively makes environmentalism meaningless. It romanticizes evolution by natural selection. That is, it romanticizes a process that depends on death and destruction in order to perpetuate death and destruction further. Nature can be awe-inspiring and subjectively beautiful, for sure, but that is only part of the picture. The gazelle still experiences pain when it is eaten alive, and the cheetah still suffers as it starves when there's drought. We can protect those animals' natural habitat all we want, but their suffering still exists. I don't claim to have any easy answers to this problem, but to hold nature up as the ideal to aspire to is delusional if one cares about the suffering of sentient creatures. Someone listening to this might interpret that I would want the extinction of all sentient beings, but that is not quite right. Although carrying out antinatalism would likely result in extinction, strictly speaking, that is not the goal. 
The goal is to end suffering, especially if the suffering is inflicted without consent. If somehow there were a way for beings to live without suffering, and it was their wish to keep living forever, that would be just fine from an anti-nihilist perspective. But of course, such a feat is likely impossible in our physical universe, so this means extinction is the next logical conclusion. In the end, whether someone finds reasons in environmentalism or religion or philosophy or whatever else to not procreate, the reasons may not matter as much as long as the result is the ethical reduction of suffering. Thanks for listening.